By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing some games of casual old school magic in my favorite pub, the Twee Klaveren in Amsterdam with my buddy Jurian. And you're going to look at an X points casual match and he's playing with uh, a deck that he's called Yakmoth's Command. It's pretty cool, it's uh, black, It's uh, it's got artifacts, it's got Yakmoth in there, Yakmoth's Priest of course, and just a lot of really cool cards. More about that in the deck tech section of this video. And uh, I'm playing against him with a deck that I've brewed especially for this meetup i've called it spy stone it works with orcish spy a millstone and arborea so i'm really excited to show you this deck i'm hoping that it kind of works it's one of those decks where you know i just hope to get the opportunity to kind of show you the lock and what i want to do with the deck even if i lose as as long as it kind of works i'm already happy you know what i mean that's kind of my starting point with this deck now before i jump into the deck text like i said we are playing according to the x points rules here you can see the points list that means we're playing with uh, the atlantic rules so mana burn is real fallen empire is there and of course we have these cards with points so when you're brewing you cannot spend more than 10 points now if you want to know more about this format check out the description below because there you can find a link to their facebook page and you know all sorts of other information so if you don't know what x points is check it out in the description below okay and uh, now i'm going to uh, continue here with the deck decks i'm going to start with uh, with my deck spy stone let's have a look and here we see my deck, Spy Stones. I'm really excited to show you uh, this deck because it's just, it's funny. I'm hoping that it's going to work. These games could take long with this deck. You know, let me explain what I want to do. So I've got Millstone and Orcish Spy in this deck. Here you can see the three main cards that the deck kind of revolves around. So if I've got Millstone in play, you know, Millstone is an artifact for two, two and tap, take the top two cards from target player's library and put them in target player's graveyard. So I'm going to try to mill my opponent but I only want to mill away the right component. So I basically want to give him maybe only Lance, you know, make sure he's land flooded. Or if he's very light on Lance, make sure that he doesn't find any Lance to play out his spell. So it depends on, you know, whatever's happening in the game, what kind of cards I want him to have. Now, how can I do that? I can do that by using Orcish Spy. So Orcish Spy is a 1-1 from Fallen Empires. Tap and look at the top three cards of target player's library, put them back in the same order. So you cannot do anything, but you can just look at the top three cards. Now, um, so I want to use my Orcish Spy to look at the top three cards of my opponent's library and then kind of decide, do I want him to draw that top card or do I want him to draw the third card, right? Because that's kind of the thing I can manipulate. So I can millstone away the top two cards if I think they're too dangerous and too good for my opponent to have. And of course, the more Orcish Spies I have, the more millstones I have, the more manipulating I can do. So I can make sure that my opponent is not finding anything useful. And then if he, you know, if it's early game and he manages to get some creatures on the board, that could be an issue with this type of deck. So that's why I'm also playing with Arborea. So Arborea is two green and two for this enchant world that says if a player does not cast a spell or put a card into play in his or her turn, no creatures may attack uh, that player until after his or her next turn. So this goes really well with the millstone plan, right? I don't want to play out anything. I just want to mill my opponent to death or, you know, control my opponent with Orcish by a Millstone and slowly grind away and win the game by milling him. Now, there are a few other ways to kind of win the game. Uh, I am playing, for example, with Channel Fireball and I'm also playing with two Ivory Towers. So hopefully the Ivory Towers can give me a lot of life. Then, or Well, a lot. I don't even need a lot. Just a little bit of life. And then if I have more life than my opponent, I can play my Channel Fireball and win the game. Now, um, I'm also playing with Mirror Universe together with Sylvan Library. This is a really nice combination because for Sil with Sylvan, I can draw extra cards, but I have to pay four life every time I do it, right? And I can do that twice every turn. So that's eight life a turn that I can lose. So if I have Mirror Universe on board with Arborea so he cannot attack me, I'm just going to draw a lot of extra cards. I'm going to get really low in my life total. Then I'm going to switch life and I can finish him off with a lightning bolt. So that's also one of the ways to win the game. So, you know, there are different ways to kind of defeat my opponent. The weak uh, weakness of this deck, of course, is it's going to take a long. Um, I need to find the right pieces. The pieces need to stay on board, which is really dif difficult. So I need to really use my counter spells the right way. Um, if my opponent's going to go too fast, it's going to be difficult. You know, if he finds a way to get rid of Arborea at key moments, it's going to be difficult. So there are a lot of ifs and buts, but 
I like it and I want to try it and I want to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, I want to tweak it and I want to see if, if I can make it work better. You know, that's that's a simple story of this deck Spy Stone. If you have any suggestions for me, feel free to uh, to leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to read your feedback. And I know that a lot of people have already tried to tinker with Orcish Spy and Millstone with Arborea and you know, that's that's where the challenge is, right? You want to see, can I make these cards work? Can I make them work together? Or can I maybe make them work separately? Whatever. But it is challenging, right? And and I, I like a challenge. I like a brew challenge. So uh, this is my deck. And maybe it's also interesting to discuss the uh, the cards with points on them. I believe it's Ancestral Recall, uh, Demonic Tutor, and Wheel of Fortune. Those are the cards that have points on them in uh, in this deck. So this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the deck of my opponent today, Yurian Yakmov's Command. And I have to say, this is a really, really cool deck. It's really cool to see these two decks going uh, going face to face today, because it's also a very original brew. So I think, you know, the core of the deck uh, is Priest of Yakmov, right? Priest of Yakmov is this card from Antiquities, one black and one, a one, two, that reads, tap, sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of black mana equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value. So what you can do here, he's playing with some interesting cards here that work together quite well with this uh, Priest of Yakmov. So he's playing with, for example, Basil Monolith. So Basil Monolith is three to cast. You can tap it for three and you can untap it for three again, right? Um, so what you could do if you've got your, your Priest of Yakmov, you can play out your Basil Monolith. Then next turn, you can tap it for three mana, then also sack it to the priest. And then all of a sudden you've got six mana, right? Three black and three colorless. And then of course you can use that to, for example, play a Triskelion. Or if you already have some more mana, you can use it to, uh, you know, play uh, the uh, Colossus of Sardia. There are two of those in this deck as well. And talking about a Colossus of Sardia, it's a nine, nine trampler for nine mana, right? It is, it is huge. What you can also do, if if that hits the board and you're fortunate enough to also have your Priest of Yakmov, if you then draw into a Drain Life, right, you can sack the Colossus of Sardia to your Priest, obviously after attacking with it. Then you get nine black mana and, you know, you can just play a huge Drain Life. And remember, Drain Life works two ways, right? And you Drain Life from your opponent or a creature if you want to. But I think in this case, you're going to go for a huge Drain Life to maybe drain your opponent to death. But you also gain life as well, right? Every point of damage that you dra drain away, that's uh, added to your life total. So it's it's a really good card, but the downside has always been you need enough black mana. Well, the black mana is there because of the uh, the Priest of Yakmov. So that's really cool. And then there are is a play set of cards in this deck that I think is, is really sweet. You don't see this card too often. That is Word of Command. So Word of Command... This is a complicated card, right? It's an instant for two black, and I'm just going to read the current Oracle text. It reads, look at target opponent's hand and choose a card from it. You control that player until Word of Command finishes resolving. The player plays that card if able. While doing so, the player can activate mana abilities only if they're from lands that player controls, and only if mana they produce is spent to activate other mana abilities of lands the player controls and or to play that card. If the chosen card is cast as a spell, you control the player while that spell resolves. So a super interesting card, a card that's going to be difficult for me to play against, very risky. Am I going to counter it away or am I just going to give my hand and allow him to just pick a spell and, you know, play it out? Maybe like bolt my Orcish Spy or something. I don't want that to happen. So yeah, it's super interesting. Um, there are some other kind of synergies in this deck as well. For example, Word of Command together with Rackman. Because of Rackman, you kind of know what's in the hand of the opponent. So that kind of works together with the word of command. Um, we also see uh, Taunus's Coffin together with Triskelion. You know, that's always a good strategy. It's, it's tough though to make it work, but remember Taunus's Coffin, you can put target creature in exile in the coffin. And as long as the coffin's tapped, the creature is gonna stay in there. When you untap the coffin, the creature comes back. It does come back into play uh, tapped, but all the enter the battlefield effects trigger again. So you can make a really big trike if you combine it, right? Because every time the trike comes out of the coffin, you get, uh, you know, three more counters. So you can make a huge trike. And remember, you can take those counters off to deal one damage to any target. So again, it's kind of this, this, this win con. Now, besides these cards, we also see a lot of like kind of control cards, right? We see sinkhole to kind of slow your opponent down. 
uh, we, we, we see a living wall, which I love. You know, living wall is there, of course, to kind of stop the opponent. And maybe later in the game, you can sack it to your, your Priest of Yakmoth to gain some uh, some black mana and to kind of ramp up to something bigger. So that's that's really kind of cool. We see an anime dead. Again, anime dead goes together really well with that Priest of Yakmoth. What I also like is this scenario where you could sack your Colossal Sardia to the Priest gain a lot of mana, do a lot of cool stuff with it, and then use your anime dead to get an untapped Coloss Colossal Sardia back on the battlefield. You know, that's also kind of a fun way. So, I mean, this deck is full of fun little tricks, and I'm really looking forward to play against it, to see it work. I'm just hoping in this match that we can see both decks shine. That would be really, really sweet. Okay, we've looked at my deck, Spy Stone. We've looked at this deck, Yakmov's Command. So, I guess we're ready. Let's go to the game. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the right. Here's my opener. Demonic Tutor, Orcish Spy. Okay, that's good. Millstone and a Lightning Bolt. Pretty good opening hand. And I believe I'm on the play here at uh, game number one. And here we see the opener of uh, the opening hand of Yurian. Let's have a look what he has. Let's take a look and see. Oh, Word of Command. Sinkhole, Priest of Yagmoth. Couple of lands. I really like that strip mine. He's putting the word of command away. So he's taking a mulligan here. Game number one. So I'm playing with my uh, spy stone deck. So it's built around Orcish, Spy, Millstone, and Arborea. So really a control deck. And my opponent has built a deck around Priest of Yagmoth. And he also plays with the play set of word of commands. Here we see the Millstone turn two. So now we can start looking at the... Ooh, there we see a sinkhole on one of my duels. So I can start looking at the top of the deck here of Yurian to kind of get an idea of what kind of cards he has and I can decide if I want to mill them away or not. But then of course I do need another land and look at that, I don't have another land. Attacking here with the Spy, passing the turn, I am casting an Ivory Tower. But no lands for me, that is a big problem. So I kept a two land hand, can, cannot find another land. Oh, look at that. Putting my uh, Orcish Spy there in prison. Playing another land. And it looks like I'm going to mill. No, I'm not. Playing that uh, Demonic Tutor that I also had in my opening hand. So what I can do here is I could go for Ancestral Recall, of course. Or maybe Wheel of Fortune. You know, perhaps I'm going to find another land. I could play that wheel. But I think Ancestral Recall makes the most sense here. There we see Priest of Yakmoth. I'm a little bit surprised that we don't see the uh, Strip Mine yet being played out by Yurian because, you know, I'm, I'm really low on land, so he could use that against me. And playing now my Ancestral Recall, so I'm going to go up to three cards in hand. Finding a Forest, playing a Sylvan Library. I do believe I could have sequenced that a little bit better, could have played the Ancestral Recall uh, in response to the Ivory Tower trigger going on the stack. And here we see the Strip Mine taking care of my Volcanic Island. And there we see an Icy Manipulator. I believe I am now finally getting some life, though, from the uh, Ivory Tower. Okay, it's only one life, but still. And of course, Ivory Tower and Sylvan Library is a really nice combination as well. I am a little bit concerned about my mana base, though. Also because Yurian now has that uh, Icy Manipulator. So you can use that to kind of tap down. My lands, I'm taking damage here, gonna drop to 17, so I'm taking an extra card, finding a land, regrowth, ancestral recall, yeah, this is what you want to do in life. Drawing more cards. And I believe, again, I'm a little bit sloppy, should have played this uh, this recall, ancestral recall in the turn, uh, in Yurian's upkeep. I was a little bit too eager, and then I found out that I had uh, 8 in hand, so I had to discard the forest there. So that's, uh, that, you know, that's some sloppy magic because it means I have to discard a card and it's going to cost me a life next turn. So could have done that a lot better. There's a uh, Basalt Monolith and there's the Taunus' Coffin. Okay, so tapping now one of my lands here in my upkeep. Gaining some life again from the tower. So here we really see that Ivory Tower Sylvan Library synergy that you actually don't see that often. Not a lot of decks take advantage of this uh, possibility. I'm really liking it because it's it's kind of like I'm drawing extra cards for free because of that life gain. So I've got nine in hand at the moment. Let's see what I can do with that. 
just passing the turn. So I guess I only had eight in hand drop to land. There we see a tap down, Volcanic being tapped down. For a moment there I thought I, I drew an extra card, but I guess I didn't. Three extra lives for me going up to 23. And now let's take a look at the cards. Just drawing the one. Playing a Simbat, wow. So I can draw so many cards right now and just gain tons of life as well. So this is really good for me. It means I don't really have to worry anymore about uh, potential attacks. Oh, there we go. Counterspell though. So making sure the Simbat uh, stays around. There's a sinkhole. And of course those sinkholes, the later you get in the game, you know, the less value they have, e even though my... Oh, and now he's of course putting it into the Tannis' coffin here. And attacking me for one. So what I wanted to say with, with the sinkholes, the later you come in the game, the less good it is, even though I'm of course playing with four different colors. So, you know, the sinkhole still has some value, but I'm not playing with any special lands. I don't have a Sylvan, I don't have a Maze, I don't have a Factory, so... Usually the, the, you know, land removal can be really good against those lands, but in my deck, you can only play it on uh, just the good old-fashioned dual lands, I guess. Gonna drop to 19 here, looks like I'm taking some extra cards again. Playing a Taiga here. And I'm not really using the Millstone, by the way, it seems that I'm constantly tapped out. Passing the turn here. And of course he can attack me, but he's not going to do it though. I'm going to pump him for two. And then he's going to tap down my Taiga in upkeep. So in response, I could use my Millstone if I wanted to. Choosing not to. Gaining some life, drawing some cards again. Look at that, dropping uh, back to 17. I'm kind of on the same life total the whole time. And playing another Orcish Spy. Okay, so I've got Orcish Spy Millstone online again. That's quite nice. And of course, of course, Yurian has the option here to untap exactly the Tannis' coffin. And then he can put my Spy back into the coffin again. That's exactly what he does. And here we see him use the Icy. It looks like at least... Not quite sure, but I'm milling him for two here, losing Colossus of Sardia and the uh, Priest. And okay, he's, he tapped down my uh, my Simbat there, I guess, on my uh, on my upkeep. So untap upkeep, tapping down the Simbat. And now I've got to put my uh, the top of my deck in order so that I know that it's got a, a land at the top. So even when he taps it during upkeep, I can use it in response. Playing another Millstone here. So changing my mind, not playing out the Birds of Paradise. Passing the turn here. So five lands open. Three blue. There is a Triskelion. Ooh, that's good. That's going to mean the end of the road. Nope, there's a Counterspell. I won't say the end of the road for the Simbat, but it's not. There's the Counterspell countering away the Trike. There's the attack for once. It's going to put me on 14. Going to go back up to 15, probably because of the tower. And it looks like he's going to tap it down. So in response, I could use it here. But I'm not, so I guess I don't have a land at the top there. Let's see what I can do. Just passing the turn. So choosing to kind of keep some cards in hand. Probably want to mill him for four. I mean, he can attack me for three, put me on 12. But he's not doing it, though. He's passing the turn. So on NSF, I'm going to mill him for four. Ooh, losing a Chaos Orb there. That's good. And a lot of lands. Only, I believe, one card in hand for, uh, for Yuri on here. Let's see, how much life am I banking? Ooh, playing a counter spell. Kind of missed that. So there was a word of command there. And using my Simbat in response to Yurian. No, he's tapping down the land. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. And now I'm going to gain the life. So I'm going to use the Simbat. 
going to stack it in a way that the same bat trigger happens first so I can count that extra land. So I'm going to go back up to 17. Kind of a lot of stuff happening here with that word of command being played out by, uh, by Yurian, but I was able to counter it. Taking an extra card here. So I'm going to go down in life, going to go to 13. So I have control here. The question is, what do I want to do with the control? Is my plan simply to mill him to zero? That is, that is a plan, but then I think I do need to like get a lot more life. So, cause I kind of feel that 13 is quite low. He can put some more pressure on my life total and then maybe finish it with, for example, a drain life. Here we see a Jalem Tome being played out. There he goes. He's going to animate and he's going to attack. So he's going to hit me for three potentially. I'm going to take the damage here. Drop down to 10. Going to mill him for four. He's going to lose a drain life there. So that's really important for me to keep an eye on those drain lives. Now, of course, I don't know with how many he's playing, but I do know that it can only be four max. So if I can just get those all in the in the graveyard, that would be ideal. Going to gain two life from the Ivory Tower. So I am going to go back up to, to 12 at least. And of course, I can chump as well with the Birds of Paradise if need be. Just going to draw one card. So many lands on my side. I wonder if I should play out that land. Not quite sure how many cards I have in hand, but... Can, the fact that I only got two life means I had six in hand, so then maybe I should keep my land in hand to have seven, so I would gain more life. Playing out another Simbad though. What am I gonna do? Do I have some kind of plan? Ooh, I'm gonna tap six. There's a mirror universe. Okay, I already thought maybe I've got a mirror. You know, I, I was taking quite a lot of damage, not really trying to get life with the tower. So maybe this is a strategy here. Using the Jalum Tome here to draw a card, then he has to discard a card. Let's see what he's going to discard. And it looks like he discarded, discarded a swamp there. A little glitch on the line, but he discarded a swamp. What is he going to do? I mean, he needs to take care of that mirror universe. Still attacking though, which I don't mind. Pointing out the mirror. But it is, I mean, it is risky. So now I'm going to untap. Upkeep and then I draw, which is the thing with the Sylvan. I first need to kind of draw and... You know, I got to make sure my life total is, is, is low enough. So that would mean it would cost me another turn and I'm quite vulnerable then if I pass the turn here. So I wonder what I'm going to do. What is wisdom here? So it looks like I'm not using my mirror yet. So I'm going to look at the cards. really into tank here. It looks like I'm trying to find the best way of dealing with this. The, the thing is, if I have a bolt in hand, let's say I have a bolt in hand, I want to go down to, you know, three. But then, of course, Yurian can also attack me for three, so I'm super vulnerable. Ooh, taking an extra card, so I am going to five. Oh, that is so risky. I need to survive, like... One more turn, right? I need another turn cycle. Remember, Mirror Universe can only be used in your upkeep. I've got so many lands. If Yurian, for example, top decks a Drain Life, and I don't have a counter spell, it's game over. Sorting my duels here, trying to find out what's best. Tapping four, perhaps Arboria. Doesn't really matter that much, though. Yeah, playing Arborea. But I mean, Arborea isn't going to help me until next turn. And, and all I need here is one more turn. I think Yurian knows this as well. Using the book here, trying to dig a little bit deeper. Oh, there's a trike. Is that a trike there? Or was that the desert that I saw? If it's a trike, it's quite risky. I mean, he's got the Basil Monolith to also cast it, right? Yeah, he's going to... Attack first. 
It looks like I'm going to take the damage here. I'm going to go to two. He's going to play the trike. Is this going to give him the victory or do I have a counterspell? Oh, I got the counterspell. This counterspell is vital. Without this counterspell, I would have lost here. I would have lost this game. Now I think I'm going to win it. Going to mill him here for four. He's going to lose another word of command. Anime dead and glasses of Urza and a land. And of course, I'm going to change the life totals. And then I'm going to play the bolt, winning a game number one. But man, that was a close call. That was really, 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 really close. I mean, if the trike would have resolved, Yuria would have won this game. I mean, this was super close. So we're going to dive into our sideboards and uh, we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm one game up. Yurian, of course, on the play, but that was a really close game one. I mean, Yurian was very close to winning it. Here we see his hand. So it looks like he's got a terror there, a weakness from the sideboard, a sinkhole, some lands. Couldn't really identify all the cards, quite dark. Let's see what he's going to do here, starting with a swamp. And oh, look at that. Glasses of Urza. I didn't see that in his hand. And of course, after my draw, he uses the Glasses of Urza to have a sneak peek of my hand. So there's a Counterspell, Ivory Tower, Arbordia, Lance, and this card, Thelon's, Thelon's Chant. Two green and one. And during your upkeep, I have to pay a green or the enchantment is buried. And whenever a player plays a Swamp um, onto the battlefield, the Chant deals three points of damage to that player. Or you need to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. So there we see another activation again. So I'm going to gain some life from the tower. Another activation of the uh, Urza's tower, of course. Going to play out the underground sea. No, I'm not. Going to play out the Taiga instead. So I guess I want to play out the Thelon's Chant as quickly as I can. So I'm forgetting here to, uh, to gain life, by the way. Exactly realizing that now. So I believe I had six in hand. So I'm going to go up to uh, 224, exactly. Now I'm going to play out the chant here. So I want to play the chant out as early as I possibly can. And we do see some, some mana issues, it seems, for, uh, for my opponent here, Yurian. And now he's playing out the swamp. So the chant is doing work. He's taking three points of damage. Hooray! So that's good news for me. And there we see a sinkhole on the taiga. So I'm going to lose that duel. I no longer have access to red mana. Ooh, and look at that playing an underground sea. And unfortunately, look at that. This is a mistake. I should take damage as well. The chant also works for me or against me, I should say. And I'm also forgetting to pay the upkeep costs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got to laugh at my own, you know, magic skills here. The thing is, if you play with cards that don't see a lot of play, like I never play with the chant. That's why... I decided to put it in the sideboard. Uh, you do make mistakes like this. I don't think it, it has a big effect on the game, though. But uh, it is definitely uh, annoying to see because you just want to play the cards the way they should be played. So sorry for this uh, for this mistake. Again, playing an underground sea. So that should deal three more points of damage to me. And there we see an activation here on the millstone with the Chaos Orb. There's a flip. Good flip. Millstone is a goner. Only four cards in hand. Now going back up to five. Look at my mana base. That's a problem. You know, I need that green mana, but it's held hostage by the chant. And I mean, the chant has done a little bit of work. It dealt three points of damage to my opponent, but I'm not really that impressed by it so far. There's the Priest of Yawkmoth hitting the board. One, two creature. From uh, Antiquities, you can tap and sack an artifact and then you gain black mana equal to the artifact's casting cost. Playing out a volcanic island here. But what I really need is a forest. If I can find a forest, I can play out that Sylvan Library. I mean, I wonder if I should keep the chant around. Maybe I shouldn't just pay the green and uh, let the chant go. Look at this. More damage though for Yurian. The chant is doing work. Already put in six points of damage. That's, uh, that's kind of a good feeling, I have to admit. There we see Yurian tapping three. There's a Basalt Monolith. Am I going to counter the Monolith? I am not. Going to draw into a Birds of Paradise. Oh, man. 
I mean, that chant, you know, that, that green mana cost for the chant is really having a big effect here on my on my game plan. Also, of course, because Yurian took care of that Taiga earlier with the sinkhole, that was a really good move. Let's see what he can do. He can generate a lot of mana with the Basil Monolith and the Priest of Yakmoth. Looks like he's going to tap two black. No untapping it again. Is he preparing like a huge play? Does he have, for example, a Colossus of Sardia? He does have the mana to actually play it out. He could tap the Basil Monolith for three, sack it to the Priest of Yakmoth, get an additional three. He would have six mana. Then tap his three lands or Felwer Stone and two lands, he would have nine. Not doing it though, passing the turn. Are we going to see a word of command here? Yep, a word of command. He's going to do that before my draw. He's going to play word of command. This is kind of tough, right? Because I can allow him to have my hand, you know, to, to have a look and play something out of my hand. He can, he cannot do much. I guess he could play out my Lightning Bolt on me. That's all he can really do with my mana base. So I guess the Word of Command resolves. I don't want to use my counter spell against it. So now my hand is actually Yurian's hand and he can play anything out of it. But he has to use my lands to do so. So the only thing he can really play out is the Lightning Bolt. Because he, he can't really counter anything if there's no target. And remember, the Word of Command is already, you know, resolved. So it's no longer on the stack. He cannot counter his own word of command. And I think that's kind of what Yurian is now kind of thinking about. Like, is there a way for me to play out that counterspell? I want to get rid of that counterspell. I think the only thing he can really do is just play out the lightning bolt. I mean, at least that's a bolt... Out of my hands, you know, I take three damage instead of the bolt, perhaps killing his priest of Yakma for later in the game be used to uh, to finish it. Exactly. So he's going to play the bolt. Going to take three points of damage from my own bolt. Now I'm going to draw that card. And I'm just going to pass the turn. Not doing much. And again, more damage for Yurian. I have to say, I mean, the chant is doing work. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever played with this card, by the way. Ooh, look at this. So he's now sacking the monolith to generate six mana, tapping three. There it is. Colossus of Sardia. And there's the counterspell. He kind of knows already that I have that counterspell. So here is the real plan. Wow. This is this is some great magic. Yurian, of course, knowing that I have that counterspell. is like, you know what? I'm just going to play through it. I'm going to take the counterspell out of his hand and then just going to animate it. And look at this. I'm going to let my chant go because I want that green mana. And then, of course, I find a duel with the green mana. But the good news for me here is that I could cast the Arborea now. That is one of the things I could do. I mean, look at my life total. I'm on 27. I could take a hit from the Colossus. Let's see what I'm going to do. Am I going to go for Arborea or am I going to go for the... Uh the Sylvan. I'm going to go for the Arborea. That does mean I'm going to take a hit of 8 next turn, possibly, because of the Colossus of Sardia. And I remember, it's a 9-9, nine -nine, but with Anime Dead, it gives minus 1, minus 0. Oh, so it's actually an 8-9 now. And I'm actually going to bolt here the Priest. I'm a little bit scared about, you know, all the extra mana he can generate with that Colossus of Sardia. So that's why I'm playing a bolt now on the Priest of Yakmoth. There's a millstone. He's going to mill me for two. So now we're both playing a millstone. Well, I, I haven't found my stone yet, but I, I assume I will later in the game. Milling away there uh, a Simbat and a Counterspell. So that was a pretty good mill. Finding a land here. Okay. Tapping three for a Burst of Paradise and a Sylvan Library. So I have the channel in hand. So if I can find a Fireball, I can actually win the game. So Fireball or Demonic Tutor would win me the game here. Yurian having a, a hand that's pretty full, actually. It looks like he's got like three, yeah, three cards in there after playing a Sinkhole on my Bayou. Ooh, there's a Weakness. Weakness is a good card against my deck, actually. 
Kills all my creatures. There's the attack for eight. So I am going to drop down to 19, it seems. Going to look at my top three cards. The good news for me is that, of course, Yurian doesn't have the nine mana to untap the Colossus, so that's something. Doesn't have a Jandor Saddlebags or a, a Maze of If to untap the Colossus. Look at that, taking a lot of extra cards here. Oh, and that's because of, again, that Mirror Universe. Mirror Universe being a key card in, um, in our first game. It looks like it's going to be a key card in our second game as well. Going to use my channel. Eat six life, going to go to five. And the nice thing about channel is you play channel out in your main phase and you can do that your entire turn. Your entire turn, you can use your life for mana. And I think Yurian is thinking about doing something. Perhaps he's got another word of command in hand. That would be pretty cool, actually, having a word of command that he can play now with a channel in effect. Look at that. And I'm just playing out everything here. Why not? Going to drop to two. Could take a damage from Mana Burn. Exactly. Going to go down to one. Which is pretty risky. Going to use that one mana and a land to kind of mill Yuri on here. And look at that mill, though. He is losing. Oh, I'm losing a bolt. That is unfortunate. That bolt can give me the victory. But look at that mill, by the way. He's milling away his Triskelion. Triskelion, again, can be a game changer here for Yurian. If he has an anime dead, I guess he doesn't though. But an anime dead on the trike would have really helped him here. Would have given him the victory using my mirror. So we're changing lives again. Yurian on one, I'm on six. Can I find a bolt? The problem is there are already two bolts in my graveyard, maybe even three. I'm not quite sure. I play with four bolts, of course. I also have my uh, fireball still in the deck, playing out another millstone here, by the way. And I mean, I'm on 11, which is not that high of a life total. Funny enough, though, oh, look at that. He's getting back the trike. That's actually pretty good. So that's, that's now a 3-4. So that's pretty good. I mean, this game is so funny. Like, the situations that we're having in this game, <laughs> you just don't see them that often. And that is the cool thing if you're playing with, like, original, like, decks. You just get these funny board states. There's the mill for four, by the way, losing Oubliette and a word of command. Felden's Cane and a Swamp. Now I'm going to look at the top three cards. Picking a Birds of Paradise. Okay, so... I am playing it out. This kind of surprise. Exactly. I need to keep it in hand. You're going to choose a counter spell instead. I'm showing the card again because Yurian has the glasses of Urza anyway. And now, of course, that Arborea is in effect. So Yurian can no longer attack me here. So I've got my Arborea millstone plan going. There's the mill for two. Losing a Sylvan and a Birds. Going to mill for four. He's losing a weakness, an oubliette, and two more swamps. So just picking up, picking up a land here from the Sylvan, passing the turn. Now I'm going to, again, we're going to mill each other. This is so funny. Ooh, again, losing a trike. I think the trike could give him the victory. He needs a lot of trikes, but... Yep, there's a bolt. Picked up a bolt from the top of my deck. That is giving me the victory. So I'm winning with Bolt in Game 1, winning with Bolt in Game 2, I guess I've built some kind of Mirror Universe Bolt deck, which wasn't really the intention, but, you know, if you win with it, you win with it. Anyway, don't click away yet, don't close this video, because we have played a game number 3, and I can tell you, Game 3 is super funny, so don't go away, stay here for Game number 3. Game number three. So here we go. And it looks like I'm taking a mulligan here. Going down to six cards in hand. 
Yudian on the play, of course, after losing the first two games. Here we can see his opening hand. Looking pretty good terror there. Sinkhole. You know, he, he can slow me down. Let's take a look at my hand. So I've got Simbat, Birds of Paradise, Sylvan Library. Okay, that is really sweet. I am starting on six, though, but that is really good. Let's see what uh, Yudian can do playing a Swamp and passing the turn. So I did take a mulligan, of course, but I am on the draw. Let's see what I can do here. Taiga into that Birds of Paradise, passing the turn. Now remember, Yurian does have a terror. We saw that in his opener, exactly killing the birds here. I wonder if he's also going to play the uh, Sinkhole next turn. Playing my Sylvan Library here. So that's really good for me. Next turn, I could play uh, out my Simbat. Are we going to see that Sinkhole here from Yurian? Yep, there's the sinkhole taking care of the taiga. And now I'm going to look at my top three again. I believe we saw a Jalum Tome there in the hand of Yurian as well. Taking an extra card here, going to 16. Playing a Volcanic Island. Not playing out the Simbat. That is surprising. Does that mean that I've got perhaps counter magic up? And Yurian here playing the Basil Monolith that was in his opening hand. There is a counter spell countering away the Basil Monolith. And now remember, of course, we don't know from each other what our decks want to do. So for me, it's just a very scary idea that he might have, you know, six or seven mana next turn. So that's why I countered away the uh, Basil Monolith here. Playing out my Simbat, hopefully it can stick. That would be really good because then I can start drawing some cards. A really good combination. Uh, Simbat, of course, with the Sylvan Library. There's a tap for three. Ah, Drain Life for one, though. Killing the Simbat. And uh, so far, Yurian is quite successful at kind of, you know, killing and destroying everything. Uh, that's a kind of a danger. At least I still get to keep the Sylvan. Of course, Sylvan is really difficult for him to get rid of with a, a mono black deck. Okay, here we see a Millstone. So if I can now find an Orcish Spy, I can kind of have that Orcish Spy Millstone combination going. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping two. There's the Priest of Yakmoth. The one two creature from Antiquities. Tap and second artifact. Gain black mana equal to the casting cost. Here we see a mill taking care of two swamps. Ooh, word of command. And now I've got a decision to make, right? Or actually, I don't. And look at that. He's going to word of command my Wheel of Fortune. You know, that's actually, it's not great because I wanted to first cast the Arborea, but it's not the end of the world either. I mean, I'm losing an Arborea, drawing seven new ones. I can live with that. There's the hand. Okay, we see Millstone. I also saw, I think, a Soul Ring in there. Let's see what I can do. So I haven't played out a land yet. Playing out a Volcanic Island. Am I going to do something or perhaps just keep counter magic open? Going through my hand again. Passing the turn, okay. Still have some mana to, uh, to mill Yurian or perhaps keeping counter magic open. Who knows? Let's see what he can do. Another swamp. Also has a Felwer Stone in there. So Soul Ring, Felwer Stone, Basil Monolith. Just a lot of mana. I don't really see... Uh, a payoff there. What else can he do? Tapping the stone, it seems, or not? Okay, tapping two swamps here, and he's going to play a sinkhole. Okay, taking care of the underground sea. I could counter. I'm countering it, actually. Okay. Interesting choice. What I could have done as well is look at that, and now he can cast that demonic. So this is this is good magic from uh, from Yurian here, of course. First, playing that uh, land removal on the underground sea, making sure even if I wouldn't have countered it, that I wouldn't have two blue open to potentially counter the demonic. So it was a win-win for him either way. Even if I wouldn't have countered, uh, you know, I would have lost uh, the the blue mana. I wouldn't have two blue open anymore. I could go to to combat, go to second main, then play out the demonic. So. That is uh, some good magic here from uh, from Yurian, and I wonder if I should have countered it. Perhaps I could have also uh, millstoned two cards away from the top of his deck. 
Then again, you know, land's important too. I don't know what's in my in my hand, of course. There's another duel here. Playing a Taiga. A little bit of a blurry camera right now. Hopefully we can get the image back. The camera's having a hard time with uh, Yuri on there flashing uh, his cards to the cam. We see an Orcish Spy. And there's a Demonic Tutor from my side of the board. So I picked my card, I did a little bit of editing and the screen, the, the focus is going to come back in a few moments. So I just passed a turn here to Yurian and he's going to play out a Glasses of Urza. Wow, that is pretty cool. So with his glasses he can actually check out my hand here. And uh, there is the hand. And there we go. We've got we've got vision back, yeah. So we can finally see the cards again. Sorry for that uh, that mess. So he can see my hand. I believe I saw a uh, ancestral recall there, of course, but also a lightning bolt, and I believe another Sylvan. So I'm uh, gonna get a damage in from the priest of Yakmoth here, and also uh, milling Yurian here for two more cards. Looking at the top three, making a selection. Now remember, I do have that Orcish Spy now as well, so I can use the Spy to spy on the top of the deck of Yurian and kind of manipulate whatever he draws there with the Millstones. So that is pretty sweet. Gonna tap two, gonna play a Simbat. And I'm gonna look at the top three cards, of course, before he draws, so I can kind of have an idea. Now remember, I have to keep them in the same way though, so I cannot change anything about that. So I just have to look at the top three and think, okay, is that top card a threat or not? If not, I can just let him draw it. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So he's drawing the card. Ideally, it would just be a land. There's a word of command though. There's a counter spell on the word of command. Ooh, there's a Triskelion. That is really bad news. Okay, another counterspell. That is really good news for me. Having a double counterspell in hand, that's quite lucky. Because that Triskelion could have killed my Simbat and my Orcish Spy. That would have been a big problem. Looking at the top three cards again here. Let's see what I can do. So, I mean, I have the Orcish Spy and the Millstone together. Problem though is that he's still attacking me with those two priests, so I'm still taking damage. Okay, here's Arborea, so now I kind of have that control package on board. That card with a lot of glare is a Sylvan Library, playing another Millstone. And of course, so Yurian still has that glass of Urza, so he's checking out my hand, so there's one Lightning Bolt in hand. And that's probably why I countered that word of command earlier. Having that bolt in hand, I didn't want him to be able to, you know, bolt one of my uh, key creatures here. The problem is I'm on 12 and he can keep attacking me with the uh, with the priest. At, at least this turn he still can. It's going to put me on 10 then, I believe. That's exactly what's happening here. Going to put me on 10. Going to mill him for two. So he's going to lose a word of command in a swamp. Gonna look at the top three cards again on his end step. Now I've got two millstones, which is really sweet. Right, so I can mill away four cards. The thing is I can only look three cards deep though, so I really have to think about what I do with the milling. Draw an extra card here, which is uh, a land of course with the Simbat because I can manipulate the top of my deck with the Sylvan Library. Found a second Orcish Spy, which is really good. Because that means that means I can look six cards deep. Ooh, and look at this. I want to check out his graveyard. Interesting. So I'm going to go through his graveyard. And I kind of remember this moment in the game. Because what I'm looking at, at the top of his deck is a Skull of Orm. Which is a problem. However, he doesn't have any enchantments in his uh, graveyard. So I am allowing the Skull here to kind of be at the top of his deck. Now, is that a good decision? We, we will find out. It is definitely a risky decision here. Perhaps I should have milled it away, but we'll see. 
So he's going to play out the skull. For now, there are no targets in his graveyard. So the skull is pretty innocent. Of course, he's going to go and have a look now and, and see the same thing that I saw earlier in the game, and that is that there are no enchantments in there. One card in hand. So, I mean, so far, things are looking pretty good for me. Going to look at the top three again. I am on eight, though. Like, my life is slowly going uh, down and down and down. So perhaps there should be a moment where I kind of stop playing out anything and just let the Arborea do the work and uh, slowly mill my opponent to death here. Looking at the top three again. Going to draw a card. It's another millstone. Going to find a land. So I could mill here for two. Just passing the turn though. So probably that card, yeah, it's a Mishra's Factory, so that's not a big problem. So there's the attack, but he can because of the Arborea. So Arborea is now working. That is really important for me that that Arborea can do its work. So I can mill for four. So this, sh this should all work pretty, pretty good. Look at the top three cards. I'm gonna draw a card. Now look at the top three. Is there anything threatening? I mean, the only thing I have to do here actually is protect the Arborea. Protect Arborea and Millstone, which I think is quite easy against this deck. And of course, I don't want him to draw into a Drain Life because a Drain Life would be pretty devastating. If he can find a Drain Life here, he can probably kill me. So that's something I have to watch out for. Animate Dead gone, Coloss of Sardia gone. Now this is becoming tricky because remember he's got the skull of arms so he can actually take the anime dead out of his graveyard with the skull and then you know get the Colossus of Sardia. Now remember he cannot look at that exactly that's what he does. Oh he's got a weakness in there. Oh wow. That is really good. This weakness. Oh man. His weakness is doing work. Oh, this is really bad. Getting it back again. Killing it again. Oh, no. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. I'm going to lose all my spies. And my Simbat next turn, probably. So this is this is kind of like the, the mistake I made, right? I, I looked at the graveyard and I thought, uh, it doesn't really matter. There are no enchantments in there. It does matter. It matters a lot because I'm going to mill away the enchantments. And then he can pick them up with Skull of Arm. Look at my hand. Now remember, I can't even play out a land with Arborea. So I cannot do anything. So just passing the turn here. He's probably going to get back the weakness, play it on the Simbat. I mean, it's still not too bad though. The big problem now is that um, I cannot see, look at the top of his deck. So I don't know, um, you know, if he's going to draw, for example, a Drain Life and then I'm dead. Yeah, so weakness here in Simbat. So that is that is the big pickle here. That is the big problem. So I'm just going to mill him, not knowing what I'm going to mill away. Also, of course, there's the Chaos Orb, so he can flip Chaos Orb. Chaos Orb now is gone, so that's really good news for me. And I, I don't know how many Drain Lives he's got, you know, in his deck. So for me, this is this is a risky moment. His deck is thinning out though. Ooh, look at this. I'm going to make a move. I'm not sure if this is a good move though. I'm going to play out another millstone. This means he can now attack me. You know, I'm open for an attack here. I'm on eight. Going to play a Birds of Paradise. Play out another millstone. Okay. I'm going to kill the rack, man. Okay. So I believe he's got five points of damage on the board. So the risk that I'm taking here is I'm saying, you know what? I want to have all my millstones out there so I can mill you really quickly. I don't want to take the risk that you can find that one drain life. But, you know, this is a danger. He can now attack me for five, put me on three. 
Let's see what else he can do. Okay, there's the weakness. And what is he gonna do? He's gonna use the skull of arm. Is there something in there? He's gonna play anime dead. Gonna use anime dead on what? Is there something with haste? Oh, of course, Triskelion's in there. I forgot about the trike. Oh no! Oh man, this is so bad. <laughs> Oh, this is so bad. I got to applaud though for Yurian. Well, well, well done, Yurian, man. This is, oh, this is very impressive, man. You've done a great job, a great job for sure. Uh, what a, what a nice, what a nice final match. And what I should have done, of course, but it's always easy looking back at these matches and then kind of analyze what you should have done, what you shouldn't have done, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's, you know, I should have, of course, um, not uh, just just not do anything, not play anything out. Arborea was still in working, and I, I should have just milled, keep the mill plan going. There, of course, there was a chance that then he still could have found maybe a drain life, then I would be dead. But percentage-wise, the chance was very slim. So I just should have kept on milling, and then I probably would have won the third game as well. But anyway, I'm happy uh, to see such a spectacular ending of a really, really, really nice match. So, Yurian, thank you, man, for bringing such a sweet deck to the table. And I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my Spice Stone deck. I mean, it's not perfect, I know that, but it kind of works. And if I play more games with it, I'm probably gonna become better at it, right? I mean, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about my deck. Would love to hear from you. For now, thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to see more here on Timmy Talks, make sure to check out the, uh, the channel. You know, there are over uh, you know, 700 games on the channel, videos on the channel already, which is uh, ridiculous. So much, so much to see. Uh, before you go, please take a moment to uh, comment, like, and share. And, uh, you know, that's completely free and really helps the channel move forward. And also, you can become a patron of the show. Yes, you can. Yurian is also a patron, by the way. And it's really easy. Just go to patreon.com slash Talks. And for just $1 a month, you can become a patron and you can support me as a content creator. And for that support, you are getting access to the Timmy Talks Discord server and you can join in on tournaments. And if you support me at a certain tier level, we can also play a game against each other, maybe even make an episode together. So there's a lot that you can do when you become a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, another perk of becoming a patron is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.